Three scriptures quickly. Isaiah chapter 6 verse 1. I want to leave these ones for us so that we can quickly tie the thoughts we have this morning. Isaiah 6 verse 1. In the year the king Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne. I am lifted up, and his, the train of his robe filled the temple. Amos chapter 1, verse 1 and 2. Amos chapter 1, verse 1 and 2. The word of Amos, who was among the sheep breeders of Tekoa, which he saw concerning Israel in the days of Uzziah, king of Judah, in the days of Jeroboam, the son of Joash, king of Israel, two years before the earthquake. Maybe that will suffice for now. The last one is Zechariah chapter 14, verse 5. Zechariah chapter 14, verse 5. Then you shall flee through the mountain valley. For the mountain valley shall reach to Azal. Yes, you shall flee as you fled from the earthquake in the days of King of Uzziah, King of Judah. Thus the Lord my God will come and all the saints with you. If you are a good observer, there is a word that has occurred in the three scriptures I've read. What is that word? No. Is the name Uzziah. In the year in Uzziah died. Amos 1, these are the words of Amos, and they prophesied it in the days of Uzziah, two years before the earthquake. Zechariah said, you will flee like you fled in the days of Uzziah. So you must understand that Uzziah plays a central role in my thoughts this morning. Uh, it's a king of Israel. But there's another word too that stands out, at least it occurred in two places, is the word Earthquake. It was said in the book of Amos that it was it was said this is the word Amos prophesied two years before the earthquake. So the word recorded in that place was actually before that event. Then in Zechariah 14, verse 5, he mentioned it. And I want us to look at Zechariah 14, verse 5 again. Um, then you will flee through my mountain valley for the mountain valley shall reach to Azar as you, and you shall flee as you fled from somebody say flee through fled from two different flight patterns were described in Zechariah 14.5 one is that you will run, but you will run through something God has created. Another one is that you will run from something that's created. This morning we are looking at two great earthquakes. Two great earthquakes. Mercy and judgment. There is one to flee from. There is one to flee Ooh. Hallelujah. So you have understood the message. I've done my supper. Uh, number one, I want you to know that Israel is not the, this particular earthquake was debated for many time for many years in archaeological circles. Because I want you to know that between Zechariah and Amos. We, Amos was a contemporary of Uzziah. Amos was a prophet when Uzziah was alive. Zechariah was not a prophet when Uzziah was alive. There is a time frame of 250 years between Amos and Zechariah. 
So when Zechariah was describing a type of earthquake and was speaking it into the psyche of a nation, that what is about to happen is similar to what happened in the days of Uzziah, then that type of event must not be something that is not well ingrained in the memory of people. So a lot of people have searched. Another thing that made it an issue is that Israel is not located, geologists, in what they call the tectonic plates of the earth. It's not a particular area that have earthquakes. It doesn't have active seismic activities. Is that not what you say? And where else could do many things? And so it doesn't have active seismic activities. So a lot of people believe that maybe it was a fascination. But as, as early as close as September 2021, these, there are archaeological evidence of this earthquake that were found. That it was not, it was a true historical event. And so when a place that does not have earthquakes suddenly have earthquake, there will be a sense of what has gone wrong. How many of you know you trust this ground you are? You've walked it, some of you, for 40 years. It has never quaked under you. You expect it to carry your weight. That's never quaked under you. The day you put your feet on it, and it's as if it's giving way, your emotions will rise. Your fear and trepidation will almost reach a level that you cannot assume. Because you have assumed that the heart cannot heal. The heart seems to be one of the most dependable friends of humanity. Ecclesiastes chapter 1 verse 4 told me, one generation goes, another one comes. But the heart remains. It is where my grandfather farmed. My father was on it. Walking on it. I live long and leave it for my children if Christ dies. It's a very faithful, dependable partner. But today you discover it's movable. When it moves, something will happen to you. That's why when the heart shakes, people flee. Because it's, a, it's an unusual thing. Then you know that he has his own terror. Now, I'm giving you too much of um, Amos chapter 2, verse 6 to 16. I want to describe the first earthquake. Amos 2, verse 6 to 16. When Amos prophesied, okay, in Amos 1, 1 and 2 first, Amos prophesied two years before the earthquake, Amos told us, in verse 2, what was his prophecy? Thus says the Lord, the Lord roars from Zion, and not pass his voice from Jerusalem. The pastures of the shepherds mourn, the top of Carmel with us. This is not a prophecy of comfort. This is a prophecy of judgment. Amos was telling Israel, God is not at peace with what is happening in Israel. And by the time you go to verse 3, and all you discover, he stops speaking about Israel. He starts speaking about Syria. He spoke about Amnon. So what is God's issue with Israel? You have to go to Amos chapter 2, from verse 6. Amos chapter 2. From verse 6. Thus says the Lord, for three transgressions of Israel and for four, I will not turn away his punishment. Because they sell the righteous for silver, the poor for a pair of sandals. They pant after the dust of the earth, which is on the head of the poor. They pervert the way of the humble. A man and his father go into the same girl to defy my holy name. They lie down by every altar on clothes taken in pledge and drink the wine of the condemned in the house of their God. It was not speaking about a strange nation. It was speaking about Israel. Yet I was, yet it was I would destroy the Amorite before them. 
whose height was like the height of the cedars. He was strong as the oaks. I destroyed his fruit from above and his roots from beneath. Also, it was I who brought you up from the land of Egypt and led you 40 years through the wilderness to possess the land of the Amorites. I raised up some of your sons as prophets. And some of your young men as Nazarite. Is it not so, O you children of Israel, says the Lord? But you gave the Nazarites wine to drink. You commanded the prophet saying, do not prophesy. Are you seeing how they are stressing God? Israel is stressing God. Behold, I am weighed down under you. The cart is full of thieves. It's weighed down. Therefore, flight shall perish from the swift. The strong shall not strengthen his power, nor shall the mighty deliver himself. He shall not stand who undoes the bow, the swift of the foot shall not escape, nor he who rides on the horse deliver himself. He's speaking about his sudden destruction and judgment that will come. The most courageous of men might, of might, that flee naked in that day. He was describing the earthquake that is about to come. I have been under pressure. You, see, you wouldn't know that there is pressure on the, on, the, on the ground. And that there are pressures under this ground because you are standing on it. When you are standing on it, beneath this ground that we are standing on is Intense fire, such you can, that you cannot imagine. Movements that you might not even be able to perceive or read until you have special gadgets to know a lot is happening. What do people perceive? They are standing on it, they perceive stability, but beneath it, there is what? Now, many a times when people are out of order with God, nothing in the immediate says something is wrong. Until you have an insight in God to know that God is under a lot of strain. How many of you know when there's evil in the land, God's purity is there? The Bible says when God looked at man in the book of Genesis chapter 6, it, he regretted that he made man. He said, my spirit will not continually strive with man. There's a striving of God with man for the way humanity is going, but many a times it's not perceived. It's like standing on the ground that is, looks like solid ground, but underneath it, there is much pressure. But God said, I'm pressed down. That earthquake was a prophetic signal of God rising up from under them. He said, I've stayed too long. So suddenly when he rose up, the cry, I said, you remember what happened that day? Everybody started running away from what they've been running towards. There are things that happen on the face of the earth. The most courageous men will flee. How many of you remember when you said, I cannot leave Nigeria? You are already processing your documents now. Why are you running? How many of you know that sound? Why are you running? Because Nothing seems at God anymore. In Numbers chapter 16, verse 19 to 34, there is a story of the, of the sons of Korah, Datan, and Abiram. The people who brought rebellion in the wilderness against Moses. You know that story. And Moses told the people who had built buildings around them, who had put their tents around them. He said, depart from these people. He said, hmm, because God is about to swallow them alive. And Moses had to say, he said, he spoke to the congregation, depart now from the tents of these wicked men, talk not of theirs, lest you be consumed by all their sins. And Moses told God, said, God, death is not sufficient for these people. But if thou will do a new thing, Thank God, Jesus' new thing is not destruction. If that would do a new thing, that you will open the ground and take them and everything that they have, like that. Then, maybe people will know. And the Bible said, the 
Look at verse 31. It came to pass as he finished speaking all this word that the ground split apart under them. And the opened his mouth and swallowed up their household with all the men of Korah with all their goods. So they and all those with them went down alive into the pit. The heart closed over them. They perished from among the assembly. Verse 34 said, Then all these who are around them, what? What did they do? They fled because if the ground you have been standing on, you yourself, ask yourself a question. If that place opened, how am I sure the way I'm standing? So everybody started taking. People flee when things that are sure becomes debatable now. Where things you can trust and you can say, well, this is how it will work. But now you cannot even say this is how it works. When the value of money changes, when, when, when you cannot say, when I have 10 million, the saving, it is security. You know what I'm saying now? Because now, if you have 10 million saving now, you can just wake up one day. See, I'm seeing strange things. I see people sell properties, all that they have acquired to travel out. You're asking yourself, how did, he, how did we get here? Because there is nothing that is assured as value anymore. So immediately, this tectonic place begins to move. What happens to people? People begin to flee. I'm trying to... Because I, I, one of the things I want to address this morning sincerely is something that is really happening. I need to say it's very clear. Most of you are really afraid. The migration happening in our nation is becoming a crisis. I've gone to banks. I see its influence. Hospitals, the doctor told me something that really troubled me. His wife in the department in UCH is a chief nurse. Before you are a chief nurse, if I can recollect what he said, you must have been a pupil, a nurse one, nurse two, senior nurse, and something like chief nurse. The chief nurse is almost close to a matron. But you know the funny thing? She's the most junior staff in her department presently in UCH. You don't, you didn't understand. She had worked there for 16 years. I'm about to tell you some things that will make you think whether to flee. If the grounds have not quaked beneath your feet, you won't understand why people are running. The last holiday before now, my daughter placed a bead in her nose. It was an emergency. I took her to one hospital. They placed down something. They couldn't remove it. They referred me to a specialist. Is it EN and T hospital? I got there. I was paying. They said the consultant is today. The woman came out and said, don't let me lie to you. The consultant is not even around. Uh, take her to UCA, then we go to UCH in what they call children emergency. We I couldn't even register for close to two hours in the emergency. Oh, well, you, Nigeria will not happen to you. When you see where Nigeria happens, when the ground quakes before you, you discover you can take steps. A lot of people are running from the earthquake. When the men of Israel were around them, were around them, fled at their cry, for they said, let the hearts, what? Swallow up. Swallow. And then I will call to you. Oh my God, man, call on Let the heart. Son of me. Also, that was why when God was trying to describe 250 years after a new thing he wants to do, he said, you will flee like you fled. He said, knew that thing. It was ingrained somewhere in their memory. You don't talk about it. You come to church, you preach, you dance. But somewhere in your subconscious, you are fleeing from something. Are you still here? Why Uzziah 
simplifies it for us again is another reason. In 2 Chronicles 26, verse 15 to 23, 2 Chronicles 26, 15 to 23, King Uzziah was a, was a king who reigned in Israel for 52 years. One of the longest reigning kings. He started his reign in a very marvelous way. He did well. He served the Lord. He feared the Lord. The Bible says he had a mentor called Zechariah the priest. In the verse 15, the Bible says he made devices. When you read about King Uzziah, it was, a, it, was a, it was a man that brought engineering feats. He made devices invent, invented by skillful men to be on the towers and on the corners to shoot arrows and last stone. His fame spread far and wide. But it was marvelously ill. He was strong. It was not a just not. It was not a main king. He was a powerful king. He was a famous king. He was a king that God held. But the Bible said, but when he was strong, his heart was lifted up to his destruction. For he transgressed against the Lord his God by entering the temple of the Lord to burn incense on the altar. He began to think of himself more than highly than he ought to think. If God is blessing the nation, he's blessing the nation because of me. So it's not even the prayers of the priest, it's me. So he said, the priest, I can even do what you are doing. You know, many a time people try to cross over into offices that are not their offices because they just imagine, I mean, if pastor can do it, I can do it. Until you get there to discover you don't have the grace to do it. It's more than, it's more than I will, I wish. It's I'm called. You find your calling. Are you just, just work in something because others are doing it and because you feel like doing it? Are you following me? So as I had the priest went after him and, and with him were 80 priests of the Lord, valiant men. They withstood King Uzziah. They said to him, it is not for you, Uzziah, to burn incense to the Lord, but for the priests, the sons of Aaron, who were consecrated to burn incense. Get out of the sanctuary, for you have trespassed. You shall not have honor from the Lord God. And Uzziah became furious. He had a censer in his hand to burn incense. And while he was angry with the priest, leprosy broke out of his forehead. Before the priest in the house of the Lord, beside the incense altar, that is no respecter of person. And Zaya, the priest, and, and all the priests looked at him. And there on his forehead, he was leprous. So they thrust him out of the place. Indeed, he also hurried. When it all happened, he took a retreat. There was an earthquake that happened in his own life. That, but the funny thing is that what happened happened in his flesh. He can't run from it. He had learned too late. The Bible says he hurried to get out. Is there something you have seen recently that has hastened your hurry? He said, oh, Pastor, imagine to you. <laughs> Occasionally, some of you cannot even easily sit down and say, it is well. How many of you still know it is where? The more you are getting, you need to get information and the more you can really piece information of our time, the harder it is for you to say it is where. The easier is it for you to become hasty. He hurry to get out because the Lord is talking. Uzziah, King Uzziah was a leper until the day of his death. He dwelt in an isolated house. I'm going to, uh, there are reasons why I'm reading all these stories. He was a leper. He was cut off from the house of the Lord. Joseph, his son was king over the, over the, was, was, his son was over the king's house, judging the people of the land. Yeah? Now the rest of the acts of Uzziah, from the first to the last, the prophet Isaiah, the son of Amos, wrote. That's why Isaiah said, in the day that King Uzziah died. So Uzziah rested with his father. They buried him with his fathers in the field of burial. We belong to the kings. But they said he's a leper. Then Jotam, his son, read in his place. If you read the Bible, they didn't bury him in the city of David. They buried him in an isolated place. He lived an isolated life. He was buried in a... They know he's king, but they cannot deny what struck him. It was something they cannot hide from. See, many a times there are things you know, but there are other things to know too. Are you following me? 
And you cannot ignore the fact that you know them. Some of you in here, tomorrow morning is resumption. You are paying your children school fees. You are paying your, your school fees of some, some of your cousins. And I mean, what will you do? <laughs> when people say you are rich, you say, I thank God. Because you know your mind. Just, <laughs> if this is riches. I believe this migration crisis in Nigeria is a flight from earthquakes. It's a flight from certain issues. And let me tell you, you no, know, I, I, I got into this teaching, I was discussing with a friend on Friday. She was calling me and she was so troubled. How many Christians nowadays don't even say God said to travel? I told her, I said, people have running from me an earthquake. Sincerely, when last did you hear somebody say, and God now said, that's why they never go to Nepal. When last year year somebody was going to Thailand, it was something which God said. They were running. One of my sons said, when he was leaving for Ukraine two years ago, he said, Pastor, if you worry, will not be the president. He ran from Nigeria to Ukraine and met Putin. <laughs> As at last night, he's in Denmark. Oh, ministry. The Lord has now turned him to a missionary. God's wisdom is great. But my brother, <laughs> some earthquakes push him around. The pastor, I said, I'm in, I'm in Denmark. He said, I should come and sing and preach. And then preach. Many of you want God's assignment for your life. I'm not sure you want it. How many of you really want God to send you? <laughs> if he, how do you want him to send you? And if, does he have the right to use anything, every activity, to send you to where he has sent you? No, so you have your ideas of what you want God to do. Whether you like it or not, the will of the Lord shall be done. He said the will of the Lord will be done. He will be done. If you will go in the mouth of a fish like Jonah, you will get there. I tell you because there's no better plan for your life than what God has for you. It's not because he's a mean God or a mean father. It's because you can't even fashion your life better than his thoughts. Who are you, O clay, to say to the potter, what are you making? I mean, the clay is totally dependent on the wisdom of the potter. He has no contribution. But thank God our potter is not just God, he's a father. Uh, are, you, are you following me? In the days of Isaac, in Genesis 26, verse 1 to 6, there was a famine in the days of Isaac, which was different from the famine in the days of Abraham. And the natural thing Isaac wanted to do is what most of us are doing. Isaac wanted to go to Egypt because immediately there are earthquakes. And nothing is at all again. Movement is natural. Are you following me? Don't let anybody come to you and be making it look spiritual. It's a natural thing. But God will overtake it with his purpose. <laughs> he wanted to go. But the Bible said the Lord put Isaac in this land. Now, there are some of you now that are troubled with what I just said now because some of you are afraid to even tell God this is my plan in case he says. Yeah, in this life. You know what you want me to do? Say, Pastor, this is what I want to do. Don't say, this is where. It's not like the Lord might not really wish have you go. Say, wish God. You know what I'm talking about? Most Isaacs here cannot hear God when there is famine, not to leave a land. Do you need any other thing to inform you not to leave a land when there is famine there? Isaac. But the Lord said to him, don't leave. But before I put you in every prison by this one story, for some of you will not say, hey, 
Even the door opened for me in Austria. But the Lord said, don't go. That's Isaac. That's the express, that is the story of some of us here, not the story of all of us here. Did you hear what I just said? Now, I, I want to put all the different dimensions of it in your mind. It's going to be the story of some of us here. Some of you, you will have green card in America. God will say, go back to Nigeria. It's your primary place of assignment. I, I pray for you, you will be able to hear God. It's only the thing that has been put on the altar that can hear that. And I think that as you that is life is the only one that can hear that. But don't worry. That's how my son went to Ukraine to enter war. If God says stay somewhere, you better stay. You don't have wisdom. There is no, there is no nation that cannot go into its crisis. Um, American election almost became auxiliary now. The stomp capital. We don't go green. We are in America. Who knows what will happen in the next one? Better stay where God says you should stay. And you know what? Buy semi-automatic weapon there. It's like buying toy pistol. <laughs> you will, may you not get to the day where you say, thank God, I'm, I'm even I'm in a ship. <laughs> oh my God. There was another story in 2 Kings chapter 8, verse 1 to 6. Elijah spoke to the Shunammite woman. He said, arise, go on your household and stay wherever you can. For the Lord has called for a family. Did you notice this different scenario? God did not tell the Shunammite woman where to go. God just told the woman, Who's? There is a famine coming. If it is Benin Republic, you can get to move now. If God tells you move, don't be too righteous. Get all the scenarios in your mind. Very terrible people. You know I'm setting you up. Uh, you should know I'm setting you up. <laughs> so the Shunammite woman went. It, had, it cost her because by the time she returned, they are taking her land. If you read that story. Then she went to the king to ask for her land. Then Gehazi was before the king and was talking to the king about the great things Elisha had done. How he had raised the dead child. Suddenly the woman came at the moment. And the, and the guy said, ah, even this is the woman I'm talking about. King said, you are the woman whose child was raised. Officer, everything that is asked from the day she left, give it back to her. Because the miracle keeps producing miracles. I said the miracle keeps producing miracles. That's why I'm persuaded that, that he that kept you in time passes. He's the same God who's faithful today. He will be revealed in your journey tomorrow. In the name of Jesus Christ. There is a God that told Isaac, stay where you are. And the same God told the Shunammite woman, go wherever you can go. That same God, in Acts chapter 8 verse 1, when the church was under persecution, the Bible says Saul was consenting to his death and there was a great persecution that arose against the church at Jerusalem. The death that time was the death of Stephen. The Bible says which was at Jerusalem. And they were all what? Scattered. Did God say we'll go? Everybody ran for his life. Not all men have faith like you are. They were all scattered throughout the regions of Judea and Samaria except the apostles. And only us. If I say I won't go now, we say, but pastor, should we go call you? That was what my friend was talking to me. Like. She, when I told her, she said, I bet you know teen law. I said, where? He said, Tony, oh no. <laughs> she said, God call you. I said, yeah. God, I said, the world is my parish. That was the answer I gave her. I said, go ye to the world. But let me, I'm not giving you an option to say, I will do whatsoever I'm persuaded the Lord will have me to. Now, I'm not giving you maledicti. Uh, yeah, <laughs> not. Never fear not. I'm just trying to open your understanding to movements that are happening. And the movements that are happening are flights 
from an earthquake, from movements and shakings on the face of the earth. The, the only problem I have with our own flight is that by the time you get to Acts 11, verse 19 to 23, these people that were scattered, the Bible said they went as far as Phoenicia, as far as Cyprus, but they were preaching the gospel. Which means, even though they were running for their life, they still treasured the gospel. The problem I have, why I'm not sure whether this dispasser will lead to a revival, is because even when you are here, you are not serious. You would have been the missionaries of God, the voices of God where you are. Because when they were in Jerusalem, they were really into it. When the death of Stephen came, they scattered and really, they moved. They did this and God told them, go to Cyprus. Did you hear? God didn't tell them, go to Phoenicia. Everybody moved. And God didn't say they didn't have it. Stop judging your friends who have traveled. It's not because they are faithless. If God told your own J. Isaac, stay. If you go, you suffer. If God tells your Shunammite woman, go. If you stay, you die. Say amen. I came for you today. Because I know all of you have your green passport somewhere in your pocket. If I say, bring it. If I be a prophet of God, some of you will see me too, Lord. The master is in Nigeria will flourish again. <laughs> See this you people you love your sustenance, your survival more than God's purpose. What I want is that whether I go or stay, the will of the Lord for my life must come to pass. Are we together? I say, are we together? Now. Acts chapter 1, verse 9 to 11. I'm, I'm describing the first earthquake. I'm going to get to the second earthquake. This first earthquake I'm describing is the one you flee from. I'm going to show you the one you flee to. The one you flee from is the description of judgment. Because these things are not, they are not good things. Death. Scattering from the death of Stephen. I'm not saying it's God's plan. Are you following me? Shunammite woman going everywhere. I'm not saying it's God's plan. But these are natural events that elicit reactions in men. Now, look at this word. Jesus had resurrected. Now, when he has spoken these things, he has been speaking to the disciples about the fact that they will receive power when the Holy Ghost has come upon them. Who's getting this message? If you are getting this, I'm following you, Pastor. When he has spoken these things, where they watched, it was taken up and a cloud received him out of their sight. Now, let's go to verse 8. Let me, let me show you where he led them. Verse 8. Let me get that word. I want to show you where this conversation happened. In Acts chapter 1. Okay, let's start from verse 9 again. Let's go to from verse 9. Now when he has spoken these things, while they washed up, he was taken up, that's Jesus, and a cloud received him out of their sight. And while they looked up steadfastly towards heaven as they went, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel. Who said to the men of Galilee, why do you stand gazing into heaven? This same Jesus who was taken up from you into heaven. We come in like manner as you saw him go. Jesus is going to fulfill two things. He's going to ascend and he's going to descend. He that ascended is the one that descended. You will see a difference of the second earthquake in Zechariah. He said, the Lord will come and his feet will stand on Mount Olive. Which means, this shaking is not the one coming from underneath. This is the one exerted from above. You need to get this. Because what I showed you in the book of Amos chapter 2, God told Israel, say, you remember what I did to the Amorites? I cut off his foot from above. I judge it root from beneath. 
I have the power to exert on the earth from any angle. I can exert from beneath. I can exert from above. So he that descended is the same person that ascended, that he might feel all things. Are you following me? This same Jesus that you see ascend is going to come in the same like manner. So they, re- so, and they return from Jerusalem to Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet. Say Mount Olivet. Now, this is church. Some of you are not used to so many of these type of teachings. If you are in what they call the prophetic movement, there is a movement in the body of Christ called the prophetic movement who believe in the description of the coming of Christ. They take Zechariah 14 literally. That Jesus is going to, because there is a mountain called the mountain of Oli. And you know, the disciples, they told disciples, as you saw Jesus go, he's going to, so they believe the return of Jesus is going to happen on the mountain of Oli. And they have Zechariah 14 to quote. Because the Lord will come and put his feet on the Mount of Olive. But what does it describe? Because when you touch Olive, that's the way, that's the description of crushing. That's what he's describing. The way we crush them like, like Olive and bring out what he wants to do. Are you following me? Do you see here? That's what he saw. They are tired. Pastor has not called with the enemy of our father's house. Enemies in your mind. Today we crush it. So they returned from the Mount called Olive. Let's go to back to Zechariah 14 again. Zechariah 14. Let's read from verse 5. Let's read from verse 3. Let's read from verse 3. Let's read again in context. Then the Lord will go forth and fight against those nations and as he fights in the day of battle. Are you following this thought? And in that day, his feet will stand on the Mount of Olives, which is the mount from where Jesus ascended. Are you following me? Which faces Jerusalem on the east, and the Mount of Olives shall split into two from the east to the west, making a very large valley the mountains shall move. How many of you here can see mountains move and you will stand? Hmm? If you see volcanoes, rock will become, it will be flowing like water. Nobody will tell you move. These are very strange descriptions. He said the mountains will split. Half of the mountain will move to the north. If it happens in the battle, some of you will not stay in the battle for the next three years. Shobokwe, that in, in Bere, the ground split into this. Ah, Akubo gonna save me. You know what I'm talking about? Because it is something your mind can't fathom. The mountain will split to the north and shall move towards the north and half of it towards the south. Things you have used to that has, has registered themselves as unmovable we split in the presence of God. Things that you, you never imagine they can change. When he steps down, they will flee. He said, then you will flee through this other earthquake. It's not what you will flee from. In actual sense, it's God making a way of escape. You didn't get it. God is going to open ways on in in places that are closed before. God is going to open ways in the midst of mountains. You didn't get that. And when He makes ways in the midst of mountains, then you find road where there used to be no road. So this one, you will flee through the mountain valley. I need to. I want you to know that this prophecy is a type and shadow of the coming of the Lord. How did I know? Let me show you why it's the coming of the Lord. Give me the next verse. And it shall come to pass that 
in that day there will be no night. The lights will diminish. It shall be one day which is known to the Lord. Did you remember what Jesus spoke about this time of his coming? That day no man knows. Except the Father. But at evening it will be like light. That is the book of Revelation. There shall be no more night there. He's speaking about the coming of the Lord. Are, are you following me? If you are a good student of the Bible, you see this, there's, there's so much harmony in the scripture. He's speaking about the coming of the Lord. He said, but you, I want you to know the coming of the Lord for the believer is salvation. That's why this second earthquake is making a way for you to run through. Uh, are you following me? It's not, it's not opening ground for you to flee from. Let me tell you something. The earthquake, the coming of the Lord is the terror of storm is the hope of our brothers. Are you following me? Some people will flee from the earthquake. Some people will flee through the valley that the earthquake makes. Are you following me? Because these are the two operations of God that is coming on the face of the earth. And if God needs to move the earth for mercy to reach you, it will happen. If things need to change, and things you don't even expect to move, if your boss needs to become your disciple for favor to come to you, he will get born again. He will sit under your feet and listen to your sermon. He said, like, oh, Pastor, let's forget office. Give me the word. And you will be looking at it. How does great men come like this? Do you know what is happening? God is splitting the mountains. will make a way for you. Who knows redemption is there? Now, don't get too occupied because let me tell you something. If the only earthquake you relate to is the first one, what it will give birth in you is flight. Or oh, Jaqua, Jaqua syndrome. Everybody's running, even when they don't know where they are running to. Take a level of shame, a Jacako Kokuruno. If the ground opens somewhere, do you say, I'm going to my father's house? Is that the first thing you say? You say, let's first leave this area. You don't say, um, the first and the most immediate thing is leaving the area. You might not even know where you are going. Do you, do you know there are issues happening on the face of the earth? Men are just moving to and fro. Ask them, what are you running towards? What are you going to? They cannot describe it, but they say, oh, I cannot remain. How many of you know what I'm talking about? Some people are just restless. They wake up on Monday to Friday. They are running around. They say, what are you doing? They say, I don't know. I don't know what I'm chasing. I know what I don't know what I'm chasing, but I know what I'm running from. <laughs> I you know, do you know what I'm saying? I don't have I don't want mommy to say they need to do cataract, and I will say Kosovo. I don't know what I'm chasing, but I know what I'm running from. Before they begin to say, ah, yeah, it was Fumbi that said the last one. Only Kony Momanque. You know what I'm talking about. I said, Father, Lord. But that's the reason why some of you are very diligent in church. You are running from something. God, you are, you are, some of you are warning God. You shall say, I'm here now. <laughs> you shall see, you shall see. You shall see. So when they call for Titus, I must be there. You, you shall see what I'm talking about. <laughs> when there's a second earthquake. The second earthquake is an earthquake of mercy. I say it's an earthquake of mercy. Look at Luke chapter 21. Let me jump. I don't want to take too much of our time. I'll leave a lot of things out. And I will not only tie it to fiscal things because I'm going to show you another earthquake. How many of you know there was something that happened to Uzziah? He ordered to go out of God's presence. When Jesus died on the cross, there was an earthquake. But do you know what that earthquake did? It tore the veil. Yeah. So that you can hurry to go into God's presence. Are you, are you following me? So when life is pushing me here, I have something I can flee through. Are you following me? The challenge I have with most believers is that when God has opened the way, you are still stuck with the, tre with the terror. 
you are still staying there as though God has not made a way for you. God has made a way for you in his presence. Therefore, you to come boldly by the new and the living way which he has made so that you might receive grace in the time. Are you following me? Go, tell your neighbor, you are not permitted to go through your journey without grace. Grace, grace is made available for you. But I don't know whether you are really hasty to get into it. Some of us are very hasty to run from certain things, but we are not hasty to get into resources that God prepared for us. Are you following me? You must have the same desire to run towards what God has opened for you. To run towards boldness and assurance, to run towards the fact that you are accepted in the beloved. Those are the things that must be driving you and driving your pursuit because those are the things by, that you will even use to undo the earthquakes chasing men. The reason why you will not act like natural men and jump from pillar to post when there's problems is because there's a place you are run fleeing through. We are all reacting, but we are not reacting the same way. Uh, you didn't get what I just said. We are all reacting. We all know the things happening on the face of the earth, but we are not all reacting the same way. Because some of us are fleeing through the mountains that the Lord has made. It's the day of the Lord. The Lord will come with his saints. That's what Zechariah said. Every time you hear the Lord is coming with his saints, it's redemption for the saints. Who is the Lord coming for? I'm one of the The Lord is, if he has to break the mountains for him to come through for me, it will happen. If he has to bring money out of the fish mouth, it will happen. But I cannot be ashamed. Who is, who is joining me on that path? I cannot be ashamed. If, so, if he had to make me produce in a land where there is famine, and Isaac sowed in that same land where there was famine and reaped a hundredfold, God is doing something that is against the normal. If he has to do it, but do you know something? They, Isaac... Even in that same land, when Isaac dig a well, the content for it, he digs another well, but he never dug an empty well. He never dug, your life will never be empty. Ah, uh, are you hearing me? It does not matter what is happening, you are not returning empty and dead. Grace is sufficient for you in the name of Jesus. And not of every calling, be oh my shall we The type of mercy that will work with you will create shakings. People will say, uh, but it's in the same system you are. What singles you out? Yeah. What singles you out? He said, uh, you're only used to the earthquake. I will show you. When, do you know when Jesus died on the cross, there was an earthquake? Graves were opened. Bodies of righteous men came out. Only to be free from corruption. Only to be free from death. <laughs> are you following me, church? <laughs> <laughs> Why this own at this other earthquake is messy. When Jesus died on the cross, the veil was torn. He said, Come, 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 come. There's no condemnation again anymore. There's no fear you can approach. Oh, Uzziah saw that day and said, Oh, I wish. Oh, I wish. Oh, I wish. And it's your own day. But the problem I have with church is that it's your own day, but you never take advantage of it. Most of us here don't even talk to the God who has welcomed you to his presence ran ahead of myself. Look at Luke chapter 21, verse 7. Thank you, Jesus. Do you get the, I think you have the understanding. It's a very simple parable. So they asked him, saying, teacher, but when will these things be? What sign will be there about this thing when these things are about to take place? said to them, take it that you be not deceived, for many will come in my name, saying, I'm here, and the, and the time has drawn near, therefore do not go after them. But when you hear of wars, someone say wars, some of you think you are strong. Have they shot a gun beside you before? You get what I'm saying? That if you if if you know what happens to vehicles, that you just make that sound. If it happens around you two weeks after, your heart will jump out. Or tire just must. When you hear of war and commotion, do not be terrified. 
Hmm. No natural man here of war and does not run. We are all affected by what happened in our nation, even if they have not kidnapped anybody in your locality before. The love fact that you hear newspaper review, you are traumatized. So you say, 75 people killed in San Fernando. So the, one day we got done on you. Those are human beings. They slept last night. If the enemy really wants to get you serious and get you worked up, the next news will be in Kogi. Some of you, have you said this that you are not praying for Nigeria again? Because in recent weeks, some of those news are not common. But immediately you have one battle again. <laughs> See, you are eating your plea. <laughs> when you have wars and comes, don't be terrified. For these things must come to pass. Are you hearing me? There's nothing happening on the face of the earth that is alien to God. They must come to pass. So, do you know we have been outside for six months. When you hear of these things, don't be terrified. Your life is not angry. Your life is in God's hand. I want to I want to disconnect you from something and connect you to another thing. Because if God does not give you hope, this society will drain everything out of you. These things must come to pass. Wicked rulers are part of end time agenda. So that your hope will not be in vain. For the Lord is coming. I said, the Lord is coming. With his saints. Oh, the greatest hope of a believer is the return of Jesus. I bring you that message nobody talks to you about. Jesus is coming. Hey. And you need to take your heart away from all these things for they are moving. For we have received a kingdom that cannot be shaken. Are you following me? You must understand that the only unshakable thing in your existence is the kingdom of God. What do we have in this commercial? Don't be terrified for this is what's come to pass. But the end will not come immediately. Then he said, Nation will rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom. Nation is more than Nigeria and Ghana. Pulani, Yoruba, those are nations. The word nations is ethnos. Did you hear they just got 300 bororos in Shaki? You cannot sleep again. God nations. You know, suddenly, Sunday ago was your near kinsman when there was Wala. Some of you even started praying for him. So, at least, Jawa not alone. You forgot whether it's doing jazz. Did you notice? You are even angry. You are arrested, Gumi. They are arresting Sunday. What do they mean? It's called nation. We rise against nation. Suddenly, that's when you will remember our local. You will just go back to your ethnic sentiments. I'm painting your times to you. I'm painting the terrors men are running away from for you. There will be great earthquakes in various places. Famines, pestilence. There will be fearful sight. Say fearful sight. Great signs from heaven. Continue. But before all these things, they will lay their hands on you and persecute you, delivering you up to synagogues and prisons. You will be brought before kings and rulers for my name's sake. But it will turn out for you for an occasion of destiny. Because the second earthquake makes a way for you to flee through. I said it will turn out for you. This movement happening is the positioning of some people here. Oh, are you following me? It is not that you are left behind. It's because God is moving some people for your own place to show up. So when God says go, go, if he says stay, stay, but never forget, you will never be forgotten. You will never be forgotten. It will turn out to you for an occasion for testimony. 
in the name of Jesus Christ. You have for settling it in your heart not to meditate before and what you will answer. Don't get worked up. I will give you a mouth. And the wisdom with all your adversaries will not be able to contradict or resist. Ah, the wisdom for go through your experiences receive it. In the name of Jesus, a mouse and a wisdom that the economy cannot resist. A mouse and a wisdom that the nation you are living in cannot resist. You are taking it all this morning in the name of Jesus. The last word is making a way for you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. You know what he said? He said, You will even be betrayed even by parents and brothers. Yeah, something some of you cannot even go to your prayer today and say, God said I should stay. You know, we are living in fearful times in case you don't know. Parents are getting older, grandma, and they know they will need their children around. But with fear, they are saying, Is it Coco Lemon? You didn't get it. Husbands and wife. Why do you say, what do you say? What do you say? What do you say? Do you know how married is? He said, because there's an... You, don't, don't, be, don't be ignorant of the things happening. Things are really happening. Forget that people are sitting down and being composed. There is shaking in the heart of people. All day I cannot leave my husband alone. We cannot be apart. Uh, you've not seen that yet. When you want three hundred, when you want five hundred thousand monthly, but you cannot save. Oh yeah. So bad day you look. My God, come work. Have you noticed people have suddenly become students again? I'm preaching this message in September because September is the month of emigration. At the end of this month, we will know how many of us will be. Admission would have taken I want you to like it. We don't tell me. Oh, the diploma. You are running from something. You will be cheered even by friends and brothers, related and friends. And some of you, they will put to death. As you'll be hated by all for my name's sake. But not a year of your head. I saw something in Jesus. Jesus will paint the gravity of the situation and at the same time paint the hope. He said you will be brought before councils, but he said it will turn to you for testimony. He said some of you will be betrayed. He said, but what? Not the hair of your head will be lost. Don't let the enemy write the last statement. Ah, uh, you follow. I said, don't let the enemy lie the last people. If they denied you, it does not mean your life is hanging. It does not mean God has not planned for your life. Don't let you see, you see, this is going to happen, but not a hair of your head. Oh, we'll be lost. God take care for you. Are you following me? Are you following me? Go further because I've not even finished that chapter. But by your patience, possess your souls. But when you see Jerusalem surrounded by armies, then know that it is the solution is there. This is the third type. It will paint the gravity. Paint the hope. Paint the gravity. Paint the, this is the third type of the gravity. When you see Jerusalem surrounded by armies, the solution is there. Yes. Those who are in Judea, flee to the mountain. Those who are in the midst of her. Let not and let those who are in the midst of our depart. Let not those who are in the country enter. But the care, but the wabiti only. Those for these are the days of vengeance, that all things which are written may be fulfilled. And woe to those who are pregnant and those who are nursing babies in those days. But there will be great distress in the land and wrought upon those people, and they will fall by the edge of the sword. And be led away captive into all nations. Jerusalem will be trampled by Gentiles until the time of the Gentiles are few. There will be signs in the sun and the moon and the stars. And on the earth, distress of nations with perplexities, the sea and the waves roaring. Men's heart failing them. Ask your neighbor, what's happening in your heart this morning?
I really got troubled. Let me tell you this story. I'll come back. As part of everything that told me in February, he can make you think. One man was working with them in First Bank for 10 years as a contractor. His entire earnings was about 85000 if I recollect very well. And that contract, if they don't absorb you in 10 years, at the 10th year, you are out. It was night year for this man. Do you know what it means to be raising a family on 85000 Those are the terrors that you are running from. And this man said, the best thing I can do is to leave. And he started borrowing money from everywhere within this system. He left in October. He borrowed seven million. He left in October. As of him, he was talking to me in February. He had paid it. He didn't hear that's how I said. There is nobody here that can save seven million in five months. Why are you and this is why bank managers are traveling out. And uh, Jack Akokolo, professors are driving taxis abroad. You don't get it. When I know when Pastor was talking to me that day, men's art. They started considering things they don't consider before. Pastor said, ah, what job will I do that will save seven million in five months? What job? Eight to six. They will still be calling you. You have not submitted a report. And they will not give you, uh, what do they call it? Two weeks leave. With 250,000. Men's are failing them. From fear and expectation of those things which are coming upon the earth for the powers of the heavens will be shaken. We see the Son of Man coming in the midst of this. May you see the Son of Man. We will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud of power and glory. Verse 28. Now, when these things begin to happen, look up. He has painted the gravity, he's painting the hope again. Lift up your head because your redemption is not there. There are two earthquakes. One is speaking judgment. The other is speaking mercy. Are you following me? One you are running from. The other you are running through. Say, okay. And I want you to know the two are happening around you. But God must open your eyes to see the one that will bring you redemption. The Lord will come. The Lord has not left us. The Lord has not forsaken us. I said, The Lord will come. Who is the Lord coming for? Wherever you have labored and you have been forgotten, you will be remembered. The Lord will come for you. 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 Exodus chapter 6 showed us the truth. In the year King Uzziah died, I sought the Lord. Do you know why? King Uzziah represented the days of life. But you must see the Lord to restore hope when there is crisis. And what did he see? He said, when I saw the Lord, I said, I'm undone. What does it mean? He felt like running away. He felt not ad- being admissible to that quarter. But he does not know that there are two at peace. After he had said, I'm undone, then the Lord sent an angel with a burning coal in his mouth. And the Lord put it and said, now you are clean. Don't let the enemy say, now you are unclean and hand the story here. After you are unclean, then you can be clean. And do you know at the end of this story, he entered that place condemned. He left that place sent. Who shall I send? Who shall go? How can a man start a journey unclean? And end the journey a servant of God. Are you following me, church? Because God has a way of, of doing the second earthquake that opens a way for you to go through. The first one, he almost ran from God. What am I doing here? He, he almost condemned himself. 
touch his mouth. And God has said, you are admitted into this audience. I have something serious to discuss. Who shall I say? The man that couldn't leave, leave his eyes to God before said, send me. Our leprosy is washed away. Our King Uzziah is dead. Both message to God to God's people. To say, Lord, send me. But I'm here, I am going. I say, Lord, send me. I'm going to contribute significantly to your kingdom. Lord, send me. Are you following me, church? That's what the kingdom is about. We are living this place not just with a survivor mentality. We are living with a saint mindset. Lord, send me. Lord, send me. And the Lord said, go. There is somebody here today that will give you power to go. You are not going as a natural man. You are sent by the power of the Lord. You are sent by the Spirit of the Lord in the name of Jesus Christ. If you are that person, say, it is me in the name of Jesus. Let me tie up for you. Matthew 27 from verse 50 to 56. Jesus was on the, on the cross. Jesus cried out. Again with a loud voice and yielded up his spirit. And behold, the veil of the temple was torn in two from top to the bottom. The earth quit. The rock was split. The grave was open. Many bodies of the saints who have fallen asleep were raised. Continue. And coming out of the graves after his resurrection, they went to the holy city and appeared to many. Now, this earthquake did not bring bad news, it brought hope. Suddenly, people know death is not the final power. You didn't get what I'm saying? From this earthquake, people said, Okay, Abraham is not in Oh, they are not forgotten. Under the pressure you are, you are not forgotten. When the centurion, those who are with him, who are guarding Jesus, saw this, the what? That's quick. And the things which happened, they fear God and say, hmm. it was the Son of God. They did wrong. Do you know what did that quick be to them? We do to them here. Come and see the Son of God. The earthquake of Uzziah made them to run. The earthquake of Jesus' death. Consider truly this is the Son of God. And let me tie up by Matthew 20, by, by Matthew 28, they took Jesus to a tomb and buried him. There are two isolated tombs I want us to look at this one. Uzziah was buried in a tomb outside of where kings were buried. Jesus was buried. But when you go, so that you can go and look at Uzziah's tomb and say, ah, it's a king go. But do you know why he was not buried among kings? It is a great God. But you go look at Jesus' tomb too. But do you know why you go look at Jesus' tomb? He's not there. He's not there. I say it's not there. We are learning two lessons. When we go to the tomb of Uzziah, why was he buried there? Why was he not buried there? Ah. God struck him. Was buried here. Said the one who died will live forever. The earthquake that came in Jesus' days it shattered all the grip that has held us there. The fear of death. Things that pushed us away from God. He made a way for us to come. Suddenly the centurion said. Let me come closer. Truly, this man is the Son of God. This man. My message for you this morning is Will you take the valley that is split open for you? Proverbs 18 10 said, The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous. As Uzziah was pouring to go out of the presence, those with the righteous be pouring to go into the presence. The righteous run into it 
in their state. Do you know why they run? Because they know nothing is going to push them out anymore. They know they are now accepted. So they run into it. Proverbs 18 verse 10. Who is there? Proverbs 18 verse 10. The righteous run into it and they are saved. I want you to go home this morning and run into it. Run into it. Touch yourself in it. There's no condemnation anymore. He said, There's no condemnation anymore. Run into it and get saved. Run into it. When you face situations, do not be anxious for anything, but in everything, be prayer and thanksgiving. Make your request known. How much, how, how much of a necessary weight do we bear when we do not carry everything to God in prayer? We have access, but we never take access. Are you following me? We know how to run from the earthquake, but we don't know how to run into the safety. The Lord will not allow you to be tempted above the measure which you can bear. That's the earthquake behind you. But with the temptation, you will make the way of escape. That's the second earthquake. One you are fleeing from. One you are fleeing to. So that you can bear it. Nothing is happening that you cannot bear. You can stand. You can stand the weight. You can stand the pressure. You can stand the need. You can stand the payment. You can stand everything coming. You can stand the delay. You can stand everything that is coming. You are covered than it. It is sufficient for you. You are covered than everything the enemy has thrown against you. You are covered than it. You are covered than Nigeria. It is he that is in you than he that is in the world. You are covered than the president. You are covered than the rulers that don't have to because I know the thoughts I think towards you. Not the thoughts of evil, but of good of this that they expected them. He says, Oh, plan for you, God has plan for you. God has plan for you. And I'm going to run. I'm going to run. I'm not going to stay. I think God didn't make a way. There has been another hatchway. He has splitted the Mount of Holiness. He has made mountain to move on my beer. Turn to your feet. Let's pray for few prayers. Hebrews chapter 10. On verse 19. Hebrews 10 from verse 19. Glory to God. Say glory to God. I thought you say glory to God. Somebody shout glory to God. Somebody shout glory to God. Therefore, brethren, have been boldness. Who is bold here? If it's not going to favor us, we'll decree it and say it will not work uh, because we have boldness. But we are not going to leave ourselves as though we are victims. We are more than conquerors. Having boldness to enter the holiest. That was the boldness Uzziah did not have. When he saw leprous, he ran. When you see the veil open, you run. One runs in the opposite direction. One runs inside. Are you following me? You have boldness to enter the holiest by the blood of Jesus. By a new and living way which he consecrated for us. Through the veil that is his flesh. And having a high priest over the house of God. Let us draw near. Someone said, draw near. Desire went out. We draw near. Let's draw near with a true heart in full assurance. Someone said, I have assurance. The spirit is all over me. It's guiding me so. Say, the spirit is all Oh, <laughs> 
The one that will flow from the head of Aaron down to his head. The spirit has a power to inhibit the spirit is Even when it happens to you in the dream, you are spiritually conscious. You wake up and give answers there. When you are seen, this spirit is all over you. It's not just what I do in church. This spirit is on me when I'm at work. And the lunch I laid upon me, and it's as if it's beyond my strength. Like, I don't just have it in little version. The spirit is all Spirit is. Isaiah 11 says it's the spirit of counsel. It's the spirit of might. You are not permitted to be weak. It's the spirit of wisdom. It's the spirit of knowledge. It's the spirit of it's the spirit of the law. It's the spirit of the fear of the law. That is all the dimension of the Lord upon you. So, so this is not going to tap into it. Wherever there is a weed, if you need understanding, if you need wisdom, if you need light and power, the spirit is all over me. The spirit is all over me. The spirit is all over me. I, I just walk in the spirit. I, I walk in the power of the spirit. Some of the grace of the spirit. That's why I gave you the Holy Ghost. You have power. You have strength. His spirit is all over you. The spirit is all over you. So be a child in pregnancy. The spirit is all over you. So children, the spirit is all over you. To be a father, the spirit is all over you. To be a mother, the spirit is all over you. For your ministry, the spirit is all over you. Everything you do, you do by the power of the Lord. Listen to the spirit. For your life, the spirit is all over you. For your health, the spirit is all over you. For your expectation, the spirit is all over you. So when you're struggling with sin, the spirit is all over you. For your needs, the spirit is all over you. If we need you, we can tell you. You are not doing fruitless labors. Oh, nothing. Counsel, understanding, wisdom, knowledge, the spirit of the fear of the Lord is upon me. It's 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 upon me. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
I didn't even get into the full scripture I was reading. Go back to that Hebrews chapter 10. Where, where were we before, before I just broke into that prophetic intercession? Verse 22. Hebrews 10, 22. Let us join me with true heart and full assurance of faith. Having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us sit fast. Are you seeing the word? Join me. Hold fast. Assure. True heart. That's what I'm talking to go home with you this morning. Somebody said, true heart, assurance, hold fast. Don't stop running from pillar to post as though nothing is assured. Your redemption is assured. The fact that you will never be forgotten is assured. Let's go find the confession of our hope without wavering. For he who promised is faithful. Oh my God, say he's faithful. He said, the bless them and said, multiply. And it be fruitful. And he knew that he had enough resources to take care of them. So today I command, be fruitful. And all you need to be fruitful is given to you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hold on to that and never waver. Let's consider one another to see up love and good works. And do you know what he said again? Don't people forsake the assembly of God's people at the manner of summits. You should be coming more and more. Don't let anything push you out of his presence. Don't, don't become a Messiah who comes back. Become a man that comes because the veil has been torn. Someone said, I'll do more meetings. I'll come to church more. I will not consider because some of you are so bored that if it's affecting fellowship, it's affecting coming to the presence of God. No, we are not like them that forsake. We are them that gather together. We are them that do not waver. We are them that are sure. I say we are sure. No for yes or you we call it. Whatever needs to happen for the glory of the Lord to break open in your life, the Lord will make it happen in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. She will not be moved, you will not be terrified by the adversary in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. If you go to verse 35 to 39, Hebrews 10, that's it. Therefore, do not cast away. Your confidence. Some of you confident. What the first earthquake does is to tell you nothing is assured. What the first earthquake does is to tell you, do you even know where you are standing? Let it be hold ground. So you keep moving. What the second earthquake does is to tell you some things are assured. Don't cast away your confidence. We cast a great reward. Some say that's a great reward. My prayers will not be denied. My prayers will not be denied. My journey will not be short circuited. You have need of endurance. After you are going to be your God, you may receive the promise. There might be times you need some endurance to stay true. Therefore, yet the little wife he is coming and will not hurt. Look at what he said. And the just shall live by faith. But if anyone draws back, Uzziah. My soul has no pleasure in me. We are not of those. We are not of those who draw back. We are those who believe. Are you following me? In the day Isaiah died and turned away from the presence of God, Isaiah lived and came into the presence of God. The Jesus, one went from God's presence with leprosy, the other came down to him, but he became to him because he did not turn away. Don't let your challenges turn you away from God. We are not of them that come back. We are them that believe to the saving of the soul. Someone say, I go forward in my journey with God. I slow coming back in the mighty name of Jesus. Pray that prayer over yourself. Pray that prayer over yourself. My Mecca is there, my Mediator is there, my High Priest is there. The blood is speaking for me. The blood of Jesus is speaking better things than the blood of heaven. I have great 
is I have mercy in the time of need. It is made available for me. Sande ruba yaka, sande le mayabo kodiapa. It is in my journey. Mercy is in my journey. Mercy is abundant. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord. We are not of them that show up for perdition. We are of them that believe that devil can tell me out of fear. That devil can tell me out of this fear. We are of them that believe. We pray for our request in. I got into the message made available for me. In Jesus' name, we pray. Two scriptures more. Hebrews 13, 12 to 15. Hebrews 13. Therefore, Jesus also, that he might satisfy the people with his own blood, suffered outside the gate. To the tomb of Zion, outside where the tombs are, it's an isolated tomb. Jesus, too, was taken outside the gate. Now, people go to the tomb of Zion and say, ah, That's leprosy. We, the Bible says, Therefore, let us go forth to him. Are you seeing the word I'm bringing to you this morning? The word I'm bringing forth to you this morning is always telling you. Do you know why? You are fleeing, but you are fleeing through a door. You are fleeing through a door that the Lord has made. Then let us go forth to him outside the camp. Whatever you want to take me, I will follow you. Are you following me? If you say I stay, I stay. If you say I move, I move. But my issue is that I will go to bear him, bearing his reproach. That's for thing. But we have no continuous city. For here we have no continuity, but we seek one to come. Verse 15 said, Therefore, let us continually offer the sacrifice of praise to God. That is the fruit of our life. Giving thanks to God. Someone say, I'm going for him. The enemy is doing everything for us to run from me. Tell him, I'm not uh, I'm not part of the people who are experiencing the first earthquake that people flee from. I'm experiencing the second earthquake that people flee from. Are you following me? Some say I went to what's it? I've come to speak to every discouraged soul here. People that want to give up their faith this morning. There's a door open for you. To run to. I said to run to. The enemy told you, go away. God is not, not concerned about you. God is not thinking about you. But I've come to say, it is a lie from the pit of hell. God thinks about you and he has made a way of escape for you. I say he has made a way of escape for you. I say he has made a way of escape for you. I say he has made a way of escape for you. I say he has made a way of escape for you. He has made a way of escape for you. So in the spirit of God, lift your voice and give him the sacrifice of grace. Give him the sacrifice of grace. Give him the sacrifice of grace. Give him the fruit of your lips. Give him the sacrifice of grace. Honor him. Finally, Ezekiel 21, but 25 to 27. I want you to decree that the Lord will move things around to favor you. Now to you, O profane wicked prince of Israel, whose day has come, whose iniquity has at the end, God says, The Lord, remove the turban, take off the crown, nothing shall remain the same. Exalt the humble, humble the exalted, nothing shall remain the same. Nigeria, you will not go in the same trajectory you have been going. Nothing shall remain the same. Exalt the humble. Humble the exalted. Nothing shall remain the same. Nothing shall remain the same. God will move things around to save us. And earthquake is something that makes sure nothing remains the same. When you go to an earthquake site, the chair that used to be here will be at the back. The one that used to be at the back will be at the front. Nothing will remain the same. The humble shall be exalted. The exalted shall be humble. Is that true? 
overthrown. I will make it overthrown. It shall be no longer until he comes. Who's right it is? And I will give it. I took it from somebody. Then I went. I gave it to somebody. I took it from somebody. I overthrew. I overthrew them. I said, this is the person who's right it is. And I give it to him. In the name of Jesus. The people, right people are coming up. In Nigeria. Right people are coming up. Not entitled people. Right people. Right people. Speak and prophesy that word. Speaking all over this nation. Right people in our local government. Right people in our states. Right people in our federal government. Right people everywhere. Right people at work. Right people that will occupy space. And, and, and take the power of life of people over children, over the plans of men. Shake. Let the earth go in motion. God shaking, sir. God shaking, sir. God shaking, sir. God shaking, sir. God shaking. From this month of September, God shaking to arrive. God shaking to arrive. Reorganize everything. Reorganize everything to the pleasure of yourself. Reorganize everything until He will. Right as God, and let him have it. In Jesus' name, we pray. I want you to pray one final prayer. Say, Father, in all this taking that is happening around, let it work something for my God. Uh, that's a very powerful prayer. For people are leaving some position for certain people, uh, and they will come back and say, Why did I leave? Why did I let it go? Why did I why did I let them send him? Why did they let the why, why did I allow them to sell Joseph? No, it was God's plan. Lord, help me shake it. Lord, make it a way. Let it give me a, a door through which I will go through. In the name of your prayer, that prayer for yourself. Yes, movements in the national, in the soul, in my friends and my family. I tell you, Lord, let everything work for my good. And for your glory in my life, somebody pray for yourself. Pray for yourself. If it says go, let me work for you. If it says save, let me work for you. But let something move over to let nothing remain the same. Let 2022 not be 2021. Let it not be 2020. Let it not let nothing remain the same. Let there be movements. For better movements, let not let not our year and our nation be like it was 25 years ago. Let nothing remain the same, not in the health sector, not in the academic sector. Let nothing remain the same. Oh, God, go in motion. Let the arise. In Jesus' name of prayer. There was a lockdown two years ago. But you know what the lockdown did? At the end, it started bringing out hidden gifts of people. So today, people are in Nigeria working in Brazil. This this will never ever happen until until the day God said nothing will remain the same. When God said nothing will remain the same, what the day? What we shall. Are you hearing me? In the name of Jesus, if the way it arranged with passport say God you will arrange it. If the way it is set, you know advance God's plan for your life, we are really arrange it. We really arrange it. If your schedule at work will not allow you to fulfill God's purpose, we rearrange it. Nothing is permitted to remain the same. Nothing is permitted to remain the same. Until he whose right is has come, then I will give it to him. Whatsoever you are due to have, receive it in Jesus' name. Receive it in Jesus' name. Receive it in Jesus' name. It was an aspect that we arranged for from being a prisoner to a preacher. Because when the prison doors opened, he came back to the jail and said, don't kill yourself. He was inside, but an earthquake rearranged it. Every movement of God that will bring that what God has deposited in you. Let the Lord God of heaven see it this morning. Say the amen for anywhere. Let the Lord see it this morning. Let Jesus see it this morning. Let the Lord come down. Let the Lord be glorified. In the mighty name of Jesus. 
I, I don't have time. The psalmist said, when the Lord came down and touched the mountains, said the mountains smoke. When God comes down, things move. He said the mountains began to skip like rams. Uh, impossible things have become impossible. When the Lord came down on only the mountains split into two. That's what we know, but it, that was that's not all. He did not split, he moved. He moved and said, run to this side, run to this side. Uh, whatever needs to move, we move. Whatever needs to split, we split. Whatever that being that the great seed and salt of the Lord shall be shut up. In the name of Jesus, the servant needs to lose the move, but nothing is permitted to remain the same. This week, they can advance. Go advance. Advance. In the name of Jesus, take two steps forward prophetically. Take two steps, everybody. Get on your feet. Go two steps forward. Take two steps forward. Advance. Go and nothing is permitted to remain the same. The weak are healed, but nothing is permitted to remain the same. The weak are strong, but nothing is permitted to remain the same. The fearful are full of faith, but nothing is permitted to remain the same. The struggling are full of rejuvenation, but nothing is permitted to remain the same. Use your voice and give them a sacrifice of grace. Give him the sacrifice of praise. Give him the sacrifice of praise. Hallelujah. Not in this family that you remain the same. The Bible says he has delivered us from the kingdom of darkness and translated us into the kingdom of darkness. Of his dear son. If you came here this morning under the grip of Satan, nothing is permitted to remain the same. You are here to, to translate into the kingdom of his dear son. You came into the door as a sinner, you are living as a saint. You came into the door knowing fully where you are not assured of your relationship with God, but you are leaving this place assured that God is on your side. In the name of Jesus. If we have anybody that want to commit himself fresh to the Lord this morning, raise your hand and let nothing remain the same. Don't go back the same way you came. Nothing will remain the same. Not even your spiritual state is permitted to remain the same. If we have anybody like that, let's pray. Let's pray. Raise your hand above your head as we pray together. As we thank you, my brother. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for this transition, for this movement that you have caused here this morning. We give you praise. We give you glory. Thank you, Jesus. So, Father, Lord, I put my hands in your hand. I thank you for deliverance from the power of darkness. I thank you for the love of Jesus. I receive Jesus. I press into my heart. He's Lord and he's my Savior. Satan, your power over me is broken in the name of Jesus. And I receive the gift of the Holy Ghost and the gift of eternal life in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. I release the word of the Lord upon you. Great is your peace. In the mighty name of Jesus, the grip of Satan broken over you. In the name of Jesus Christ, nothing remains the same. Whatever you are addicted to before you came here has lost its power. Whatever controlled you before you came here has lost its power. You are a new creature. All things have passed away. Behold, all things are new. In Jesus' mighty name, somebody celebrate God this morning. Hallelujah. My brother, thank you for raising your hand after the service. Please, you're seeing Wally is staying in after the service. I want you to, to, to address him, get his details, because the greatest thing that has, the greatest transition that has happened is the one that just happened to you this morning. Hallelujah.